Cool. I'm David. I'm currently working uh, for Omisego on Plasma, and I'm having a blast. And uh, things are making progress. Uh, so, uh, what is Plasma? First, can I get a show of hands? Who has like a big picture, general understanding of Plasma? Ooh, wow. More, th this is awesome. This, this usually doesn't happen. Uh, anyway, uh, so basically, uh, Plasma white paper promised EVMs inside of EVMs. We're not there yet. <laughs> but we're baby stepping our way there. Uh, and right now, the focus is on app specific functionality. Uh, Omiseko's focus in particular is leveraging uh, Plasma as a scaling solution to support the transaction throughput we need for a decentralized exchange. But uh, in kind of pushing uh, app specific Plasma child chains forward, uh, there's a lot of cool kind of apps that you can use Plasma for, or that you can start building uh, kind of child chains for right now. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of potential with uh, app specific Plasma child chains. So how would you go about doing this? Uh, so right now, just because uh, Plasma doesn't currently support uh, full EVM functionality, it's not, it's simple as taking like a Solidity smart contract and being like, ooh, mainnet is too expensive, let me just deploy on a child chain. No, it takes significantly more effort than that. But it's worth it because you get scalability without sacrificing uh, security. And that's kind of the sales pitch of Plasma. Because, uh, so when you use kind of the Plasma architecture, you get uh, the security from the child chains consensus mechanism, and that can be whatever you want it to be. It could even be just one person signing blocks, because even if that one person is horrible, and they are trying their best to steal <laughs> your hard-earned ETH or whatever crypto you may possess, uh, basically you can always uh, settle disputes and exit back to Ethereum and safely regain your funds. Uh, Right now, uh, that sounds pretty awesome to me, but there is one caveat. Uh, in the current kind of Plasma design, you actually have to watch uh, the Plasma child chains. So you have to watch the child chains and verify the blocks to make sure nothing sketchy is going on. If something sketchy is going on, you have to exit. If you don't exit within a given amount of time, then the safety guarantees, uh, well, they disappear and you might lose money. So either you need to watch or you can basically economically incentivize someone else to watch for you. And uh, that's kind of uh, the beauty of Plasma. Uh, anyway, so I just, as I said before, you can't just take a Solidity smart contract and deploy it on a child chain. But what you can do is highlight uh, the func specific functionality that uh, your app needs. And in many cases, you can bake that functionality into uh, the child chain infrastructure. So it takes some kind of architectural work. It takes a lot of thinking. And it definitely, the more complex the app, uh, the kind of harder this process becomes right now, just because uh, the B Plasma kind of derives its security guarantees by being able to track state transitions uh, so that when uh, anything goes wrong on the child chain, you're basically, it's being tracked on Ethereum uh, so that you can settle it. Uh, but yeah, so an easy, or not easy, but an example of this would be uh, with supply chain type stuff. So as soon as you start dealing with non-fungible assets like the ERC721, uh, token standard, you can basically do a bunch of cool stuff because uh, basically when you put non-fungible assets into a child chain, uh, you only can get the same things back out and you can't create assets out of thin air like you can with fungible assets. This gives us a lot of cool security uh, guarantees. So basically uh, in Plasma MVP, the main danger is that the operator uh, withholds a uh, block with invalid transactions. And no one knows it's wrong. They only are like, 
hmm, I can't check to make sure it's right. And in that situation, you have to exit within a given amount of time. And as I mentioned before, if you don't, you might lose your funds. Well, good thing I don't have a presentation. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and so, but with uh, non-fungible assets, uh, what you basically all you need to prove is that you own them, and then uh, so basically every owner of a given asset, it's their job to keep track of that asset in particular, as opposed to having to verify the entire state of the child chain, which is significantly more computationally expensive, uh, just because you have to download all the blocks. It limits scalability because people have to actually run the child chain on normal computers as opposed to just getting proofs that uh, basically their non-fungible assets are, are safe. So yeah, Plasma is coming along. We're pushing the ball forward. And yeah, join us on this fun scaling adventure. Oh, yeah, questions. I'd love to answer any questions. What's up? What does the roadmap look like? Great question, uh, Griff. Uh, so uh, in terms of EVMs and EVMs, uh, that's kind of further on the, further down the road. Uh, in terms of the roadmap for like, uh, non-custodial atomic swap uh, settlement on child chains. Uh, it's coming soon, I would say definitely uh, this year, uh, probably before the end of this year, I would say. I know, exciting stuff. Uh, but yeah, there's still a lot of kind of optimizations to be worked out because uh, basically right now we have stuff that works. Now we're just trying to kind of uh, change how it works to maintain the security guarantees while making the user experience uh, significantly smoother than it would be right now. So yeah, it's coming soon, but if anyone wants to make app-specific Plasma child chains, they can start tonight. Cool, cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the question is, does every individual user on the Plasma chain have to actually watch the Plasma chain, or can, I, can Jordy over there check the Plasma chain, and then if anything goes wrong, then if he discovers it, am I safe? Uh, it, that was, that's correct, yeah? Awesome, got that right. Uh, so basically, uh, in, like, uh, the way, in like a perfect world, everyone would validate the child chains themselves. Uh, this is an imperfect world and we can't expect end users uh, to realistically do that. So the workaround for that is to basically uh, kind of economically incentivize a third party uh, to basically be able to trigger an exit for us if they see uh, bad behavior. So yeah. I would say, like in its current state, uh, basically you have to build that into kind of the plasma chain setup uh, where you can basically allow a third party uh, to exit for you if anything goes wrong. So it's doable, but you have to consider like the economic incentives and build that in. Is this a single uh, to be one party because uh, that places a lot of economic incentive for that party to kind of miss misbehave. Uh, in the case where you're dealing with uh, invalid blocks that you can see, you can do a lot of cool stuff with fraud proofs where as soon as you prove that something invalid has been included in the child chain, you can basically stop time. Uh, but if the consensus mechanism is basically accepting invalid transactions, they're most likely also withholding blocks and there'll be no way to prove that. And so in that case, I would want a bunch of economically incentivized third parties uh, who could trigger exits. Yeah. An, an exit to one person is an exit to everyone, right? No. No. Uh, so. Question. What? Repeat 
Oh, sorry. An exit for one person is an exit for everyone, right? Uh, yeah? So no, no. Uh, the answer is no, yes. That's, <laughs> that's correct. Uh, If, yeah, that's the easy situation where you say you have an operator and they publish an in, they include an invalid block in the chain. Then everyone sees that and everyone exits. The kind of trickier situ situation is if, say, an operator creates an invalid block, they publish the root uh, to like Ethereum, but they never publish the block. Uh, so basically, it could be valid, it could be invalid. Uh, in the current design, you basically assume uh, if you can't validate a block that it's invalid and then everyone has to exit within a given amount of time. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so assuming you do like the smallest amount of work to get to the decentralized exchange, what kind of uh, uh, throughput is that? Like what's that support? Uh, in terms of throughput, we're uh, like, a huge understatement would be like an order of magnitude better than Ethereum, uh, but significantly more than that. Uh, I'm just kind of being super safe. Uh, basically, the limitation on throughput is that everyone has to be able to exit uh, within a given amount of time. And currently, when we're dealing with fungible assets, everybody has to be able to run the child chain. So if the transaction throughput gets too high, realistically, uh, the average user uh, won't like they'll have to rent cloud space to run it basically, which we we, we don't want that to be the case. Yes. So in the last one on developer call, um, um, the guy that was talking about the shared character business kind of thing that happens on the child chain, uh -huh. where everyone who receives funds kind of needs to put on a signature that the exchange will not be distributed and then block that shit has to be included in the Ethereum chain. So then doesn't that If you do confirmations, yes. Uh, currently, that's kind of uh, an area of ongoing research is basically uh, eliminating the, com uh, the confirmations uh, by making other trade-offs. The reason why confirmations uh, are such, con such a hard thing uh, in terms of usability is basically uh, from a user's perspective, they send one transaction, then wait until it's successfully uh, included in Ethereum and then they have to send another transaction uh, with like the prepare commit scheme, and that's not, not a great user experience, so we're currently uh, figuring out ways around that. But in terms of transaction uh, throughput, I wouldn't say that's a huge issue. It's an issue in terms of ref being able to reference the same UTXOs, but in terms of pure transaction throughput, you can still get it super high, because uh, right now how Plasma MVP blocks work is they're just like two to the power of n. So if you want bigger blocks, if you feel confident that your users will be able to validate bigger blocks and that everyone will be able to exit, you can just make the blocks much, much bigger. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a HackMD that I think might actually be attached to one of the Plasma implementers call, implementers call uh, uh, YouTube video. Uh, you can also just like be like, yo David, where is this no confirmation hack MD? And I will send it to you. Yeah, cool, cool. Any, anyone else? Awesome, this was fun, thank you.